The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residents and its forgotten history. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Captain Dennis, and I'll be your host for today's episode of Squalus Marine Divers. Today, we're heading down to Stamford, Connecticut to dive inside of Can 32. It's an area called the Cows. A bunch of fishermen asked me to check it out, and I don't know too much about Stamford, so I said, what the heck? The first thing I noticed when I got in the water was it was a bit of a current. The sooner I get to the bottom, the less of it I'll have to deal with. Now this whole bottom is this soft, it's like a mat of very small muscles. I don't know if they're muscles, but they sure look like them. It's almost like a carpet. If these are a type of muscle, they were everywhere. And I don't know if that had to do with the good visibility we had. It was probably about 10 feet. Once we get away from the flatland, we get to the base of the pile of rocks and we start moving up. You start to see more and more large boulders and stones. There's all kinds of sponges and corals and barnacles and all different colors. I mean, for the sound, this is probably the most amount of colors I've seen. A lot of oranges, a lot of whites, a lot of yellows, a lot of green. It's great to dive rock piles. You always end up finding something. There's all kinds of things that live in between the rocks, like this sea urchin, for example. And you'll find fish. And you'll find things stuck in between the rocks. The visibility is pretty good. It's fun to be able to just jump in in Stamford, Connecticut without having to go on an airplane and have a dive just like this. You can see some blackfish. I'm on the northwestern part of the rock pile. I think because the visibility is so good, I can actually get the fish on tape this time. Normally, they hear me exhale, and the bubbles scare them away before I ever get a glimpse of them, and I just get a shadow. Yep, this is a pretty popular fishing spot. Like I was saying earlier, when you dive on rock piles, there's no telling what you're going to find. And when it's a fishing spot, you might find evidence of fishermen. Like that weight earlier. And, if you see it, some bottles. I'm not saying fishermen drink, but there's some bottles down here. I was really surprised. I didn't expect to see this much color on this dive. There's so much sulfur sponge here. And the orange stuff, which I still haven't really figured out what it is. It's 
I was really surprised by how many blackfish were here. Now the ones that you're seeing don't really have much size to them. That's why they're not very big. The big guys are a little bit more cautious. And on the chart it talks about wreckage. This big orange piece right here is some kind of steel or iron and I found somebody's swivel. Now, do you see anything here that you would pick up? What about here? Yep, and there's a bottle. As we get closer to the top of the rock pile, we start to see a lot more color and a lot more life. And I think that's because there's just more ambient light that gets in here. You see is the, the current moving a little bit through here too. These are some big rocks, folks. Some of these are the size of cars. Like that one. Keep on the lookout for some fish. Ooh, yeah, you didn't see that fluke, did you? You know you're rewinding that and you're watching it again. I say that every time I see a fluke because they're so good at camouflage. Well, the sulfur sponge gave us all the yellow. And now we got all kinds of orange. I've seen this stuff in the sound before, and I still haven't put my finger on it, just exactly what it is, but Stanford had the most of it so far. If you look in between these rocks, we've got a whole bunch of sea urchins. As you can see, all these rocks had things growing on them, except for these, like, dozen. I don't know why nothing was growing on these. You can see here these little shells. I don't know if they're mussels, but they're all over the sides of the rocks as well. And over here, you can see another mammoth stone. There's some fishing line. Let's see if there's anything attached to it. lead weight and it looks like somebody's umbrella rig or for trolling or something been down here a little while it's a little brittle some more bottles and that's just what i need more bottles that being said if you're interested in bottles be sure to contact us on the website because we'd love to get rid of some of these bottles Oh, look, one more. Some of these bottles are relatively modern, but some of these are older. Can you see the last one? Oh, there it is. Sorry, Mr. Crab, just trying to clean up. An old Coca-Cola bottle. When they say Coke bottle glasses, it's because this glass is so thick. These are really well-built bottles. So we're going to make our way back up to the boat, and I'd like to take a second again to say thanks for checking us out once more. We're going to keep on diving, and you keep on watching. If you want to check us out, we're on Facebook under Squalls Marine Divers. We're on Instagram under Squalls Marine, and there's the good old website at squallsmarine.com. If you have any questions or comments or you'd like to submit an idea for a video, we'd love to hear it. Here's one of the old bottles, it's from New York. 
And there's pictures of it on the Facebook page. So why don't you check it out? Until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.